Hi everyone, my name is Jarek from Genius the Gecko and welcome to another video presenting to you the Planless, great tool for project management and planning. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos, uh, take a look at that, they are available on our channel. And today we'll be going through steps that allows us to quickly start working with Planless. So basically what we need to do from the moment we first log in into Planless to the moment we can start working with it. So let's go. Okay, so you can see that currently I have nothing in my workspace. I have no tasks, uh, I have no folders, and even click to display everything. Yeah, you will see that there is nothing here. So to start working with Planless and use all of its feature and all of its uh, strengths, uh, we need to do three things. So first of all, we need to add users. Uh, then we need to add skills because Planless heavily relies on skills. Uh, and at the end, we of course need to add tasks. So we will do this now step by step. Uh, but by the way, when you first log into Planless, you will see that you have two options. You can actually create completely empty workspace or you can create a workspace with default data. And these, uh, these default data are the data that you've seen in my previous videos. So if you want to have a feel of planless and do not start working on your particular configuration right away, you can use this default data uh, if you like. But if not, uh, if you want to start planning uh, and have configuration, so the users, the skills and so on, tailored to you, steps that we will be doing now is something that you'll have to do anyway. So I went into settings and members and you can see that I already have some members here. Uh, when you first log in, you will also have one member, it will be you. Uh, I have some others because I will be using them later when doing task import, so I do not want to remove them. But basically what you do now is you can just add a new members. So you give them the name. What is the resource type or the member type? So basically whether this is a person who only uses Planless but does not any work on the tasks. So they are not treated as a resource. Person who uses Planless and is doing the work and person who can only be treated as a resource. So we can plan work for them but they are not using Planless uh, at all. Uh, and we will have to put the email of a person and also select the skill. So I already have one. Uh, we'll move into how to create more skills in a moment. Uh, so let's just do, that. let's create a user. Yep, user and resource. I will put my own email here. So here it is. And let's just pick a skill. I can also define the level of skill. Let's leave it as it is. Uh, so yes, uh, another person or another user is created. I could create a group and just drag some users in it. So it can be uh, useful when you basically have uh, multiple teams and you want to group these users. So you can see that creating users is pretty straightforward or actually the members. Let's move on to the skills. So this is the second part of this settings page. We have skills many here. And similar to what we've seen in the members, we can add a group, so group the skills, or just add a skill. So for now, let's add a skill. Let's say that I will add UI UX design. I can pick already, or actually I have to pick who has a certain skill. So let's pick our newly created user. We can select multiple users, of course, and for each of them, we can set the level of a skill. So let's save the changes. We can see that it worked as expected. And obviously we can also uh, add new groups and group the, group the skills. So I will cut here, I will add several loops and a and, and couple of skills for, for each of them. And then I'll get back to you and show you 
how can we create the tasks. So I created the members or I added the members. I created the skills. We can see that the skills have members with certain level of skills assigned. So now we, all we have to do is create the tasks for the plan list to do the magic and figure out what should be our optimal plan for the project. So let's take a look at how can we create the tasks because there is actually several interesting uh, options there. So let's start by creating a folder. Let's say that it will be a folder for a project. Awesome. And here we are, we can see that we have this it's folder with at the moment one task. What can we do now is we can just add a task or add a list of the tasks. Uh, so if we do not have a lot of tasks, we can add them one by one by clicking here. And we've seen this on one in one of our previous videos. So all we need to do is add a name of a task, select a skill that is required to do the task. So let's, it will, let's say it will be uh, design and they, uh, estimate the effort and add dependencies if there are some, of course, I do not have enough tasks to do that yet. So let's add a task. But of course, adding tasks one by one can be pretty time consuming. So we can actually create tasks in bulk and there is few ways to do that. We can add a lit list of a task. This is pretty neat feature, although it is very simplified. So I will copy example that you can see here just to show you how it works and what it does. So we have a list. These will all be the tasks that will be created. So you, do, you see that we do not have a lot of information here. We just create a task with a name. There will be no skill assigned, no estimate and so on and so on. So we will have to fill these tasks later with this information. Uh, but we also see here that some of these tasks name have basically uh, other characters in front of them. What it does, it, it shows us where in hierarchy these tasks are. So basically tasks of project A will be a child of project A subtask of task of project A will be a child of this one. Uh, we can of course pick where we want to put the, uh, this structure. So let's put it directly in project one. So in, in, in the folder that we created, but we could also put it under one of the tasks. So let's stick to it, create task list. And you can see that right in the project one, so in our folder, uh, we created tasks of a project one with subtask, project B with subtask. So it created the structure that we were expecting. So it's pretty neat. Although again, we need to fill this task with additional information with the skill, with dependencies, with estimate for plans to do its work. So that already looks pretty good, but what if we want to create tasks in bulk with all the information that is already needed to uh, for the plan list to do the planning. Uh, so there are options to do that. I will for now remove the tasks that I created. We do not need them. Okay, we're empty again. Uh, let's go into settings. And here we have option of importing data. Now you can already see that op th there are quite a few options here. So if we already have the list of our tasks of work to be done in one of these tools, uh, we can actually import these tasks into Planless and use that. So if you have hundreds tasks that you, that, that you work on, you do not want to create all of them manually. It's pretty, pretty neat feature. It's pretty easy to import this task and start working with Planless. Uh, what we will do is we will create the tasks doing the uh, CSV import. 
yeah, I, I think this is the most flexible and universal thing. Basically, any of these tools can export data to CSV file uh, so that we can import it. Uh, so let me first show you the file that I will be importing. So we're clicking CSV file, upload the file, and here we have our file. So let's go on with that. So now you may have noticed when I've shown you the file that there are some users already assigned. And some of these users were actually not defined by me. Uh, so planless allows us to decide what to do with these users. So I can either create a new team member or assign or map this user to someone. So let's do that for one, for the other. Uh, for users who had the same name as in the file, uh, Planless already just assigned them. Uh, we can, of course, override that and change with, with some other user, but let's keep it like that. So we will create one user. Uh, Emma will be Emma and the person who or the task that was assigned to the John in the file will be assigned to Matthew. Let's continue. Now the skills. The skills in our file were also not matching the ones that we had defined. So obviously we can now map them uh, or we can create a new skill we can also not or basically ignore this data. I won't do that. So let's let's map all of them to something. Yeah. Continue. And where do we want to put our data? Uh, I think that when I was removing the tasks, I removed even the folder. So we will be putting this on the top level of our workspace. This is our only option here. Of course, we could put it lower or in the other place if uh, we would have some structure already. Let's do the import. And awesome. So you can see that tasks were imported. There is a structure of a task, so pretty neat. Uh, we have both the skills that were existing or the, the skills from the file mapped to the existing skills, but also one new skill was created. And you can see that users are already assigned based on either the skill or the information from the file. So I was not mentioned anywhere in the file, yet I was assigned to two, two, two of the tasks. Uh, Greg and Matthew, yeah, Greg was a newly created user. Matthew was the user that was in the file under a different name and was mapped. So, but, and, and you can already see that plan is starting doing some planning. So we can see where the tasks are planned in time. We could go to resource tab and see who is allocated to how many tasks, how much time is left for this person. So I think it is pretty neat feature. What is missing a bit for me is uh, creating a dependencies within the import. So we still have to create dependencies manually here, uh, but still that's way less work than if we would have to add each task separately uh, manually. So I hope that this video was interesting to you uh, and basically in less than 15 minutes we were, uh, we were able to go from completely empty planless to start working with, with planless to have some plan already incorporated. So you can see that it, it's not very hard to pick up this tool and start working with it. That's all for today. Thank you. And that, my dear friend, was Planless, a tool that we are really fascinated with when it comes to automated resource management. We are Planless partners and we help customers get trained and get comfortable with the tool. We also sell licenses to this tool with a discount. So if you're looking for any kind of services around this tool, maybe also just to talk about whether this tool is good for you or not, or maybe if there are any other good opportunities that would match your requirements, let us know. All the important information will be available to you in the description of this video down below. Thanks a lot for watching. We appreciate you and see you in one of the next videos, hopefully.